What's up everybody? Will here from Mini Proof Cooking. Welcome back. So my wife won't get off my ass about making her some apple fritters, so I am making apple fritters today. However, I think I might throw in a little twist here and there to spice it up. So without any further ado, why don't you watch the video and let's see what we can make. So let's start off with talking about the apples you're going to use in these fritters. You can really use whatever apple you want, but I would suggest using Granny Smith's. I tried it with a couple of different ones, and the Granny Smith's were the ones that worked out the best. The mild flavor really went well, and they held up in deep frying. So what you'll want to do is, whatever apple you use, cut it up into small cubes, and set it aside for the time being. Okay, let's talk about the batter. You'll want to get two large eggs and crack them into a bowl. Then add in one tablespoon of white sugar. And you're going to want to mix that together until they're nice and combined. Then add in one cup of whole milk and again mix until nice and combined. Set that aside for just a minute because now it's time to talk about the flour. You'll need two cups of all-purpose flour, adding in one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon of kosher salt and again whisk until combined then you'll want to take your egg milk and sugar mixture and start pouring it into the flour and mix together now I started using a spatula to mix together and very quickly I learned that I should be using a wooden spoon because it just holds up better against this dough this dough really thickens up so what you might have to do is put a couple splashes of milk in as you mix to loosen it up a little bit from there add in your granny smith apples and continue mixing until they're good and homogenous as you can see i abandoned the spatula and got the wooden spoon this dough is pretty thick so you're going to need something good and sturdy to mix it the spatula was the wrong choice and as you can see i'm also putting in another dash of milk just to you know loosen up the dough a little bit that's the consistency you're looking for now I did say I'm going to mix it up a little bit and make some different apple fritters. So I'm going to make a separate batch of dough here. Uh, same recipe as before, just don't need to go over the ingredients again. Adding in the Granny Smiths, but this time I'm also going to add in some bacon I had left in the fridge from another recipe. I'm going to mix that all in and make bacon apple fritters. I think that's going to turn out really well. Once the batter is nice and mixed, it's time to start deep frying them. So what you'll want to do is grab your pot or Dutch oven like I'm using and fill it with vegetable oil and preheat it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now as you can see on the right I have a wire rack which is what I will use to cool down the apple fritters after I take them out of the oil. So what you'll want to use is a half cup measuring cup and drop in the dough into the frying oil. Now, each one of those batter recipes that I just went over with you will make about six fritters using a half cup measuring cup dropped in. Depending on the size of your pot, you don't want to overload the oil because it could bubble over or just drop the temperature too much. So try and avoid overloading the Dutch oven. What you'll want to do is fry these for three minutes per side. So after three minutes, flip fry for another three minutes and then take them out and place upon your wire rack in your rimmed baking sheet to allow to cool and wait for the other ones to fry. And voila, look at those apple fritters. The ones on the right hand side are the regular apple fritters and the ones on the left are the bacon apple fritters. So let's set those aside for a minute while we make the frosting. So I'm going to do two different frostings. Let's talk about the regular apple fritters first. All you need is a cup of powdered sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, or in my case, vanilla paste. I'd recommend trying the vanilla paste. And then slowly add in some whole milk until you and whisk together until you reach a desired consistency for the frosting. See, it was a little too thick, so I added in another dash. 
until it reached the right consistency. And then bring back your fritters and start glazing them. Make sure they're good and coated. The last thing you want is an apple fritter that doesn't have enough glazing on it. But then let's also talk about what we're going to be making for the bacon apple fritters. So use another cup of powdered sugar, but instead of vanilla extract, we're going to be using about a teaspoon of bourbon to really set this flavor off. And then similar to the other glazing, a couple dashes of whole milk and whisk together until you reach a desired consistency. Taste that. Yeah, that is going to be really, really good. Similar to the regular apple fritters, you'll want to grab them and dunk them in the glazing. Make sure they're good and coated. And then after a couple of minutes, when the uh, glazing has hardened up a little bit, flip them over and do the back sides of them because you don't want them to be just covered in, on one side. It'd be kind of pointless, don't you think? So there we go, all of them are completely frosted now. Don't those look great? So let's give them a taste test. This is the regular apple fritter. And those are really, really good. But let's give the other ones a try, the bacon apple fritters with the bourbon glaze. And just break off a little piece here to try. And wow, those are good. The smokiness of the bacon mixed with the apple and the richness of the bourbon glaze. Holy, they're good. Don't get me wrong, the regular apple ones were good, but these bacon apple fritters were way better, way better. But that's the end of the video. Hope you like what you saw here today. We'll see you again soon on Nitty Proof Cook. Don't forget to subscribe.